smile. Thank you. Okay, we are up to the bracha of the Yerushalayim. In the English Art Scroll, it's page 108. It's it's really a remarkable thing to think about, as we've discussed in earlier sessions, how much of benefit there is in just paying attention to what we ourselves are saying during the davening, that it should enhance our own understanding and approach to our relationship with God. It's remarkable. We have now two consecutive brachos that are really all about the redemption. And it's a very striking thing. And, and by the way, we had an earlier bracha, which uh, we had another bracha that talked about sending a sign to the world and, 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 and gathering uh, Israel. We had another bracha that ended, uh, Goel Yisrael, the Redeemer of Israel, but we said that doesn't really refer to the redemption. We have all these redemption references in the Shemar Hasrei. It's very much the focus as, as, as believing Jews belief in the redemption, and we'll get into today also hoping, yearning for the redemption. Uh, famously, it's one of the questions, the Gemara goes to certain questions that are asked of a person after 120 years when they go up to Shemayim, and one of the questions is, Tzipi Yeshua, did you yearn for the redemption? It's very interesting. The question is not, did you believe in the redemption? That's not the question. It, it's very nice if you believe in the redemption. That's not what we asked you. Did you really hope that it would happen? And, and, and that's, that's core to what we're supposed to be as thinking, feeling, believing Jews. And, and so it's very fitting that we talk about it so much in the Shemona Esrei. Um, in terms of the sequence, there's a Medrash, there's Medrash Shochar Tov on Tehillim, the famous, famous Pasuk, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushaloyim Yishloyu O'avoyich. They have to seek out, ask for the peace of Jerusalem because those who love God will be at peace if Jerusalem is at peace. So a number of the Mepharshim explain that that's why the bracha of the Yerushalayim is here, because we're coming off of the bracha of davening for the sake of the righteous, that God is a source of support to the righteous. So to the extent that we ask that he be benevolent to the righteous of Israel, to all of us, but particularly the righteous of Israel, so then the next point is we daven for the rebuilding of Yerushalayim, because that's, to a truly righteous person, that's one of the greatest gifts God can give. Rav Schwab suggests that's why the first letter of this bracha is a vav, right? Any, any, anyone who's taken basic courses in composition would tell you that, that a, the word and is not a good way to begin a paragraph. Vili uh, Rushalayim, and to Yerushalayim. So, so the point is that it's, it's very clearly bridging this to the previous concept. That if we ask for the good of the righteous, core to asking for the good of the righteous is that Yerushalayim be rebuilt. It's an interesting thing. One more, one more general comment about this bracha. Um, there's, there's a medrash on Sefer Shmuel which says that in the days of Yeruvim ben Nevat, Yeruvim ben Nevat was a famous king who led many members of Klal Yisrael astray. Klal Yisrael was guilty of disgracing three different entities. Based David, the house of David, and it's the whole thing. Yerav ben Nevat started a competing, competing uh, line of, 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 of royalty. Uh, they derided the base Hamikdash because the whole thing was Yerav ben Nevat kind of set up another place that people could go to worship, and they derided the value of the glory of heaven. And so we're told that the ultimate redemption won't come until Klal makes sure to pay the proper cover to each of those three entities. Based of it, the, the Davidic line, the temple, and the glory of God. And actually, the Sefer Hamanic says each of these three things come up in this bracha. So now let's just read the bracha. We'll maybe we'll touch on it on a point or two along the way. To Yerushalayim, your city, it's very powerful that we call it God's city. In other words, it's, it's, we're, we're looking at it. It is a beautiful place, uh, but it's much, much more than that. It's the city that we associate more than any other place in the world with our relationship with God. It's your city, God. Uh, with mercy, you should return to Yerushalayim. Rav Schwab says that we recognize the fact that it's very likely that God will only return to Yerushalayim moved by his mercy. In other words, if it's only our merits, he might never come back. Uh, but but uh, when you mix in the mercy of God, that, that, that's where we're coming from. And you should reside in Yerushalayim as you have spoken. 
It's a concept that shows up in the prophecies that God will bring his presence back to Jerusalem, meaning in a new Beis HaMikdash, in a new temple. Build Yerushalayim speedily in our days. It, it's a very interesting thing. You have numerous tefillos that talk about things should be in our days, in our times. You know, to God, everything is relative. So uh, what we consider multiple lifetimes in God's eyes could be soon. So we, we ask that it should be soon. But we also ask that we personally should, should merit to be there for it. It should be the karov, be a main, in our days. Binyan olam, an eternal building. And it's this time, let it be that, that it will be forever. That Jerusalem, and what we mean, and, and what we mean Jerusalem, is, I mean, thank God we live in Jerusalem, many of us live in Jerusalem now, but we mean even more than that, we mean Jerusalem with the rebuilt temple. And that presumably is the reference to Vesishkon Vesochak Hashet you should reside in Jerusalem, like you have said. This refers to the rebuilding of a temple. V'chisei David Meira L'Sochak Hachid. And you should speedily establish the throne of David in Yerushalayim. So just to go back to that measure we mentioned a few moments ago, why is it so important to talk about the throne of David here? I mean, it's very nice. Like, that's a nice part of having Jerusalem. So the, the argument would be that we understand there are certain things that we, that we need to kind of recognize them as, as we recognize them as a group. It's a merit for our redemption. Because it, going off of what Yeruvim kind of led the Jewish people astray with. So we focus on all three points. The glory of God. We, we, we want you to return to your city, but we want you to return to your city in the temple, and we want the house of David to be there, the, the royal line of David. And that, that says the Sefer Amani is why that statement is here at the end, that you should bring the, 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 the throne of David back. Baruch Ato Hashem, Bonei Yerushalayim, blessed art thou God, the builder of Jerusalem. And Rav Schwab makes an interesting comment over here, and we'll see reference to it in the next bracha, also, we, we've said this so many times that it's interesting, many of the brachs of Shemona Esrei you might have thought would be in the future tense, and they're, and they're actually in the present tense. So this is another example. You could have said, Baruch HaTo Hashem, She Yivnei Yerushalayim, that, he'll, that he will build it. But we say he's building it. And the comment that Rosh Schwab suggests here, and it's a very powerful thing to think about specifically in our times. Who knows where we are in, uh, uh, along the lines? It, 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 it could very well be, we could certainly relate to it. Uh, I think we can relate to it better than many other times and places. It could be that Jerusalem, as we speak, is in the process of being rebuilt. We hope so. We very much hope so. So it's, it's an interesting thing. By the way, it, if people were here Shabbos afternoon, we had the guest speaker Shabbos afternoon, he said this very powerful image of a person went out to the, to the field and he saw them destroy the wheat, and he was so disturbed. Why are you destroying the wheat? And they said, no, we're doing it to make flour. And then, you know, why? Oh, you put it in the oven. You ruined it. No, we're doing something else. And so many times we see things, and they look terrible. And it's really just to create an even greater thing afterwards. Again, we don't have to be so creative in our times to, to think of the ultimate redemption. But it's a very powerful thing, even with heaven forbid, when things happen that bring us great concern. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it's the last moment right before the redemption. One never knows. But it's a very interesting thing to think about that we say Bonei Rishlein in the present tense, that we very much hope that it's in the process as we speak, as we speak to God now. So uh, any, any comments before we, uh, yeah, Aaron? I was just thinking, the fact that we don't even mention uh, the, the Binyan of Rishlein, the building of Rishlein, the Binyan of Rishlein, until after we've introduced it as a concept, that's of course what you were saying earlier, which is that Yerushalayim is, is, is it's almost an idea. You know, it's a thing uh, that, that transcends building. It can, it can be destroyed, it can be built up, but we want Hashem to return to that area more than anything else, to that idea. And then, it, and then we, and the, the uh, Rebbe goes on to say, and, and build it up, and build it up. Return there, and then, you know, and, and then just build, by the way, build it up too. It's almost like you mean, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, you mean like the core is God returning there. Yeah. Once God returns there, it yeah. kind of builds itself almost. That's a very nice point. Thank you very much. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Max. Yes. Jerusalem is the city of Shlemus, isn't it? 
So if you look at the idea, which is also not a progressive scene in our films, is the idea of being whole, and being close to Hashem, being whole to aspirations as, as people, as individuals. And so if we feel that Hashem is closest to us, and His presence is most felt uh, in that context, we're, we're hoping that in that same vein that we are hoping for wholeness in our lives. And by through His closeness to us, Right, I, I mean, I think that's certainly true, but I definitely think this bracha is not a figurative bracha. I think we mean that we should rebuild Jerusalem. Um, but what is it about Jerusalem that is so significant? There are the, the, the uh, Kobanos, there are the Kifinos. What is it that we recall or we are told happened there that is special to it? So it's not just the, the bricks and the mortar and the, the temple. It's what was characteristic and changed from the first to the second temple and was no longer there at the second temple. So what are these experiences that were specific to Jerusalem? That's what I'm trying to get to. So, and so yeah, it's correct. No, no, no. I, I think, I, I, don't, I, I don't think we're disagreeing, I, I, especially once I heard your, your, your follow-up. Uh, but I, I, I think just what Aaron said, I think, sums it up very nicely in line of what you're talking about also. That at its core, what we talk when we talk about Jerusalem, the ideal model is the temple. And what's ideal about the temple is that the presence of God is there in a more clear way. And that's why we, we talk about the God should return. You should reside in it like you said you would. That, that, that's, that's the core of it that a person could walk into the temple and feel the divine presence in a way that they had never felt it before. I don't know if I'm responding to what you're saying or not. I, in other words, an extended discussion of, of the values of the basement, which I don't think we have time for. Uh, but I think on a general level, I think that's the point. I think so. Thank you very much. Today, when we say this prayer, it's a little indirect to be saying we're asking for the rebuilding of your life. We're really asking for the temple to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The prayer may have been composed at a time when Jerusalem was basically in ruins. But today, I mean, we're yeah, what we right, we're, we're really asking. For we're not asking for more pizza places, right? <laughs> we're, 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 we're right, you know. So, but uh, right, I mean, pizza places are good, but 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 uh, right, but 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 yeah, we're we're, we're um, yeah. I mean, you're right. So they, so they have to add its core. What we're really asking yeah, for, we uh, it would be. A little bit more specific for us to have a, a prayer and it says specifically to the rebuilding of the temple. And maybe we have one later on, but uh, this one is a little indirect, but I believe we have to think back that this was probably composed at a time when it was in total room. Right. I think, I think though, there is still, even for us, I think your point is, is certainly accurate, but I think even for us, there's a great benefit um, to recognizing. Obviously, we should have great appreciation for Yerushalayim. We should have great appreciation for every opportunity we have to visit Israel, to be in Israel, and the current sanctity of Israel. But there's something to be said for the recognition that no matter how wonderful it is, it still is not everything it can be. And it's not just that there's something wouldn't be nice to have a basic it's just the whole Yerushalayim would be even greater. I think there's a value to that. Yes, Rabbi. Uh, the Siyur of the Bracha, the, the uh, Conclusion really uses uh, a designation, a name of God as Bune Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, what you have seen earlier are really four stages in being the Bune Yerushalayim. So those are commands actually Tashuf, Tishkon, Bune, and Tashin. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do those four things. And then you'll truly be the boy that you worship. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe last comment, then we'll move on. Yes. But isn't there a part on Tisha B'Av that we say that we speak to at this point, and it says that that Hashem destroyed Yerushalayim by fire, the, the temple, and that that's the way it's going to be rebuilt. Rebuilt. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, we're talking about rebuilding in a what seems like a very pleasant and um, uh, constructive way when really uh, 
Um, that quote doesn't necessarily mean maybe that oh, quote okay. could mean in a very, a very powerful. Uh, I'm not sure that means that he'll build with destruction. I'm not sure that that it has to be understood that way. And even if the words be understood that way, we do believe that build, rebuilding a Jerusalem is a is a very positive thing. Even on Tisha B'av, we believe it's a very positive thing. I don't want to get too far afield in terms of a Tisha B'av comment, but but it's 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 an interesting. I'm sorry, I just have to thank you, thank you very much. Okay, um, next next bracha. And so the idea, by the way, before I forget, the, the mystical, elusive Pasuk from Ashrei last week was not a Pasuk from Ashrei. For anyone who was, who was curious, um, the eyes of God are to the righteous, and his ears are, to, are turned towards their pleas. So that was the Pasuk I was thinking of about Allah Tzadikim. So um, for those of you who couldn't find it in Ashrei, <laughs> Don't ask for a refund on your sitter. <laughs> if you just ask your rabbi for a refund on okay, but I'm, um, next uh, bracha S. So now we we this is really about the kingdom of the Davidic line, but what we really mean here is it's the prayer for Mashiach, and it's a very interesting thing to think about <laughs> the. Uh, the ingathering of those exiled of Israel was one request. The rebuilding of Jerusalem with the base of Mikdash is another request. And having the, the Mashiach and all of the accompanying benefits of having the Mashiach, whether it be the clarity of leadership, whether it be the clarity to the world, that's its own freestanding request. Whether it be the unity that comes through the Mashiach, that's its own request and its own right. Again, this is, speaks so much to how, how much we yearn for this Salvation. Um, the bracha begins as tzemach David Avdecha Meiras Atzmiach. The blossoming, the sprouting forth of David, your servant, you should very quickly cause it to grow. Again, it's not that David will come, it's that David's descendant will come. So he who sprouts forth from David, you should cause him to sprout forth quickly. And um, the same point that we made in the previous bracha, where Schwab makes it in this context also, growth is a process. And it doesn't necessarily happen in one moment. Specifically the Mashiach, it's fascinating. If you look at the line from which the Mashiach will ultimately come, uh, there's so many interesting unions, and, and uh, sometimes even somewhat questionable, you know, that ultimately, you know, between men and women that ultimately lead to the birth of the Mashiach. And all these things that at the moment you look at, so what's the value of this? What's this all about? And it ultimately leads to the Mashiach. It's, it's a very powerful lesson. The fact that it, it's a process. And this is, I just think, we are in nine days. Uh, Rav Schwab had such a nice line. He said, so if you think of the Mashiach and the ultimate redemption as a growth process, so what waters the seeds of the redemption? What, what's the water to help the seeds grow? The morning of Yerushalayim. In other words, for, for, for our sincere mourning of, 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 of not having a Yerushalayim in its full state with the Beis HaMikdash, etc., that mourning is in and of itself that which makes the, the, the redemption sprout forward. It's just an interesting thing to think about, which of course you have famous quotes, uh, famous rabbinic quotes about the importance of mourning Jerusalem. It's an interesting thing to think about. As Semach David Abdecha Meiros HaTzmiach, you should make it sprout forth quickly. You should raise up, I think it's normally translated, you should raise up his glory, enhance his pride through your salvation. What is Karen actually? A horn. So Karen is a horn. So the idea of it seems to be that an animal will sometimes use a horn as a means of defense or asserting itself physically on other animals, right? So for, it, it's, it's a mushal to raise up one's horn is a symbol of might, self-assertion. It's an interesting thing. Rav Schwab also suggests that there's another significance to the word karen. Karen also could mean to shine. Karan or Pnei Moshe. Right, that the, the, the face of Moshe, the skin of Moshe's face, shone. Right, that's this famous mistake about the Jews with horns. You know, that's when it's. Uh, um, so he suggests that the function of Mashiach is both. The Mashiach is someone who will 
raise the horn of the Jewish people, so to say. In other words, uh, bring great pride and glory to the Jewish people. But Mashiach also will be someone who will give off a certain shine. In other words, that, that the nations of the world should be able to look at the Mashiach and the Jewish people during his times and be mesmerized by the glory of who he is as a person, not just his ability to defend himself as a nation. So it's an interesting like, duality to what the Karen, what the, what the, what the horn, what the pride, what the glow of the Mashiach is. It's an interesting thing. Ki lishuascha kivinu kol hayom. Because for your salvation, this fits into what we talked about before with one of the questions a person has asked. For your salvation, we have yearned. Kol hayom, kol hayom doesn't even mean every day. Kol hayom means the entirety of the day. Constantly. That's all we can think about. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, just imagine, imagine just thinking about that once a day. Just even for a moment. That God, this is, this is my absolute focus, this would make, I, I mean, just, just, just imagine, we all have things that we hope for. It could be in our professional lives, in our personal lives. We, we all have or have had things that we hope for and we can't take our mind off of it. So that's what we say to God, that's what we try to be. I mean, hopefully, uh, that's a big thing to say. But that we can't wait for the moment that you return all of your glory to Jerusalem with clarity for the world and for us. Just even to reflect on that, that's what we're supposed to be feeling. It's, it's, a, it's a very powerful thing. Baruch Atu Hashem, Matzniach Karen Yeshua. He who causes to sprout forth the glory and the pride of salvation. Any comments, questions? Stuart? Our prophets tell us that the redemption, the process is going to be horrific. You know, in world war and, and terrible destruction, including of many Jews and of our land, it, it's a little hard sometimes you know, to really yearn for this and hope it's in our day. I mean, it's going to be an awful experience. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good point. I mean, that's really what... It's with, 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 that's a good point. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, uh, um, but I, 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 I gosh, uh, you know, next bracha. Um, um, but, but I, you know, I would, uh, I would say that in the in the end of the day, uh, probably the way we're supposed to view it is, it will be horrific, but there'll be great things that come from it. And and I mean, in the, in the end of the day, I mean. Just, just think. How, how much pain, frustration, worry, anxiety a thinking Jew has for Cloud Israel today? Uh, you know, the, the, only, the only reason we're, we're not kind of, forgive me for saying it, the vast majority of us don't have that problem because we just don't think that much. Mm -hmm. Or if we think, we don't think that much about others. You know, so, so, so the bottom line is the, the sorrows, the pain, the worry, unfortunately we live with it. And, and throughout the generations, Cloud Israel's lived with it. But imagine if, again, we don't, we don't wish anything ill upon anyone, but imagine if someone could say, this is it. And then after this, and I don't know, I think so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Beryl. Yeah, chronologically, uh, doesn't it seem like this prep should have been before you should Yes, Maybe there is. Yeah. Uh, so the argument is that, that once there's Yerushalayim, you could certainly make that argument. It's a very good point. The argument is once there's Yerushalayim, then there's clarity for the reign of the Davidic line. And it's essentially the last clause in, in before the closure of the previous bracha kind of leads into this. You could have certainly have said it the other way around. Fully agreed. But... Yeah. Then it's a, that's what you were, right? Did I understand you correctly? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, maybe less coming so, over. Just one more uh, observation, and it applies uh, to this bracha and the Hatimata bracha, the end of it, uh, as well as the entire uh, Shmon Asrei. And that is Lushon Nochach and Lushon Nistar. So we approach. We approach God just as we take steps forward, and then we take steps backward. So we come, we come up to God, and we say, "Atzmiach, 
you know, Tahum and uh, Yeshua Ka to your Yeshua, you know, and then we step back. Uh, well, we're still saying that Baruch Ata Hashem, blessed are you. And then we say, the one who is Matzmiach, Matzmiach Kevin Yeshua, you know, so then we designate him, but we're not talking, uh, we're talking about him a little bit more in the third person than we were doing in the second person. Great. Thank you very much. That's, that's the context to our Right. If you say something about it, right. then you repeat it part of the blessing. What, what, what is the idea behind that? Well, that's what really Stanford was talking about a moment ago, and that the idea is that there's this, this constant back and forth between making very specific requests of God, be very conversational, but standing back a little bit, a little bit of Darach a little bit of cover. We're not so buddy-buddy uh, with God, so to say. That's this, thank you. It's, 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 a, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, moving on, and this is the last bracha of this request section of Shemona Esrei. This is the closure of the request section of Shemona Esrei. Um, it's interesting, a number of the Mepharshim quote a Pasuk that um, we'll say quite frequently in a few weeks already, I'll bring them to my holy mountain, I'll bring them great joy in my house of prayer, they'll be able to bring their offerings, because my house will be a house of prayer for all of the nations, that once we talk about rebuilding the base of Mikdash, and once we talk about the, the Davidic line sprouting up through that rebuilding the base of Mikdash, we talk about prayer. And, and so it's, it, it, it fits with that flow. But also, it's very meaningful as a closing bracha of this entire section. There's also, just to mention, there's an interesting, the Rebbe Yucker cites an interesting measure in Tehillim, Parakuf Tazayim. So there's a language where we ask God to hear es koli tachanunoi, my voice, my supplication. And what the Medrash says is we say to God that even if the entire world calls out to you, it's actually interesting to think about in, in, in light of our current, uh, current struggles and worries. Uh, even if other nations of the world call out to you, we beg you to listen to us. So in, in Tehillim we say, please God, hear Koli, my voice, Tachnoi, my supplications. So we begin, says the Rebbe Erker, that's part of what we're thinking about here, to, that we ask God to recognize his special prayer relationship with the Jewish people. Shema Koleinu Hashem Elokeinu. Hear our voice, Hashem our God. By the way, this is a comment you could say in many ways, in many contexts. Rav Schwab just points out that we ask God not just to hear our words, but we ask God to hear our voice. And the significance of one's voice is the passion with which one speaks. So obviously, this doesn't work well if we're speed reading and not thinking about what we're saying. But uh, but Shema uh, Koleinu Hashem Elokeinu, God. Please hear our voice. Chus v'rachem aleinu. Chus and rachem seem to both be languages of mercy. So there's an interesting comment attributed to the Vilna Gaon that chus isn't just a regular language of mercy. Chus, and there are different sources for this, but chus is a language where someone made something and he has compassion for his handiwork. In other words, when, when, when one of my children builds a Lego creation, and theoretically speaking, a sibling comes and destroys Lego creation, <laughs> there's, a, there's a special uh, frustration, a unique frustration in the moment, not just that his toy is broken, but I made that. That I made that is chus. God, you made us. You, you, you need to have a special compassion for us. And you've designated us as your, as your chosen people. You need to have a special concern for us. 
And in general, Rachem, they have mercy for us because we're totally dependent on you. So chus v'rachem aleinu. And by the way, the Rebbe Yaakov suggests that what it means, Rachem aleinu, is have compassion for our souls, not just our physical beings, but, but, but for our, our, our spiritual needs. V'kabel v'rachamim uvratzon es tfilosem. And accept our prayers with mercy and with favor. What does it mean to accept our prayers with favor? So a number of the Mepharshim say, one way or another, that when God accepts our prayers with favor, that means for those of us who actually deserve to have our prayers answered. Right? In other words, you know, some of us come, and again, to, to oversimplify it tremendously, we all have a certain amount of quote-unquote mitzvah points and uh, whatever it is. Obviously, it's much more sophisticated than that. But uh, a person makes a request. You know what? We've got a lot of things going for us. That for, for who we are, for what we've done, that's a very reasonable thing to ask. That's God accepting our tefillah birat so. Looking upon us favorably. That sometimes a person makes a request. And why in the world should God listen to this request? And, and, and sometimes he listens to it anyway. And that's God accepting our request, berachamim, in mercy. So we come to God either way. Accept it berachamim, accept it berotzom. Kikel shomea tzvilos v'sachanunim ata. You are a God who hears <coughs> prayers. It's interesting, Rav Schwab suggests that there's a difference between tzvila and tachanun. Tzvila Pileo could be a language of judgment, assessment. Uh, Yaakov says to Yosef, filolti. I never thought I would see your face. So filolti is related to tefillah. Tefillah is, is a person reflects, a person thinks about the relationship with God, a person, and, and they make a presentation to God. They make an argument. I don't mean, I don't mean adversarially, but, but they, they make a presentation to God. That's tefillah. Tachanun is, is prayer of the heart, you know, with, 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 a, with a passion. And obviously, our tefillah should be both. But, but the point is, you listen both to the points made, but you also listen to the passion behind those points. Or to say it differently, you listen to the thoughts and reflection. Imagine a person davens, and as they're davening, they reflect that, yes, their life is really about serving God. It's a very powerful moment. In a certain sense, that's more they're, they're coming to clarity. Then you have a person who's just begging God that things should be better for them. That's more tachanam. they come out to And from before you, our God, don't send us back empty-handed. The Rebbe Yaakar says a fascinating thing, I mean, which really seems to be the pshat, but just, you know, I don't know about any of you, I, I never thought about it much. Rebbe Yaakar says that we say to God, you know, we ask things of you, maybe, maybe even with your rachman, maybe we don't deserve to have our tefillos answered. Or maybe this is just whatever your, your cheshbon is, whatever your calculation is, maybe it doesn't even have to do with our tefillah, maybe this is just what it has to be. We still beg you, don't send us back empty-handed. Maybe you can't completely fulfill our request, but give us something. Don't, don't send us back reikam. Don't send us back empty. And by the way, just as a perspective, as the Rebbe Yucker says, maybe it means don't send us back empty-handed. Don't send us back without completely answering our prayers. You know, that's a, that's a great thing. Never send us back with a no. <laughs> so the Rebbe Yucker says it's not, it's not conceivable that that should be what we mean here because it's not a realistic expectation that every time a person prays, their prayers will be completely answered. But at least for, for I mean, it, and, and by the way, just something to think about. I'm sure all of you could say the same thing. I learn a lot from the people around me. I'm sure I don't learn enough. But I can't tell you how many times people have told me of terrible challenges they've had in their lives. And they pause for a moment and they say, but you know, I met this person along the way, some, some neighbor who I didn't have much to do with before, you know, and they really were there for me. So that, that's, that's a classic example 
of God not sending us back empty-handed. Right? Sometimes the results are not what, we, what we're hoping for. But, but even within those results, we get so much help along the way. There's something to think about. Ki atosh because you hear the prayer of your nation Israel with compassion. And we recognize the fact that you, God, are the one who hears prayer. Uh, it's a very, very, just, just that face value, just a very, very powerful, powerful blessing. And again, this is the closure of this section of Shemon Esrei. Any comments? Uh, Aaron. Uh, you mentioned earlier that Rachim Avenu could be a like, prayer that Hashem takes care of spiritual needs. I was wondering, what does that mean practically? What does it mean practically to take care of your spiritual needs? Um, I, I, that's, thank you for, for asking that. I mean, I, I think it could mean different things. Um, I think a lot of us, I think most of us, in one way or another, have a certain amount of confusion in our lives. Um, so many of us, benefit from this experience or that experience or this person or that person. There's so many ways for God to help us just by orchestrating events in a certain way or giving us that clarity of the moment or giving us that strength of the moment. I don't know about any of you. I find myself many times saying to people, may God give you chizuk. You know? I mean, that, that, that I think is very much, I think so. Yeah, thank you. No one else? May I ask you? Uh, so even though we may not get what we ask for, is feel God's presence in our lives somehow? Is that what you're alluding to? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more literal than that, at least from the Reba Yucker's perspective, that we might not get what we ask for completely, but give us something. <laughs> give us something. Um, I, again, just to make put it in very concrete terms, we dive in that a person should get well. You know what? Sometimes it's not meant to be. Sometimes, for whatever reason, it's God's plan the person will pass. Um, but maybe the person will pass with less pain than they could have had. That's God giving us something of the tefillah, even if it's not fully responding to us. And, and the, the vexing thing, by the way, is we'll never know. In other words, we'll never know what could have been. We, we don't know. And then I think that fits into your comment that a lot of it has to do with for us to for us to have the vision to see God in our lives. You know, I, I, think, that's a, I think that's an important piece, too. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's, it puzzles me that there's no request for understanding um, of what Hashem does. Like if he, we ask not to be, not to be sent away empty-handed, but what about the, the bitachon, or just the, the rationale, or just something to give us so the only thing I'll mention is um, I, I was very moved uh, the bracha of Goel Yisrael the, the, the redeemer of Israel which is on 102 at the bottom of 102 I think it was the Rebbe Yucker who said they, uh, I mean, I, I, and maybe we can appreciate it more now I don't know about any of you I feel like I've never damaged one essay before you know but but uh, <laughs> Like, oh, who, that prophet comes next. I never knew that. Um, um, fascinating text. But, um, you know, if, if Goel is wrote first the ultimate redemption of Israel, why in the world is it there? It's not, I mean, we've been talking about that the last few brachos. So he says, Goel is wrote first personal challenges. And that, and that help. And so, so if you look at, so, so see our cause, God, fight our fight you know, has to do with helping us through our personal challenges. And there are many ways to help us through our personal challenges. And I think, I don't think it's such a stretch, if you view the brook in that, in that vein, I don't think it's such a stretch to see giving us clarity as, as part of that. I think so, or giving us the strength to, to deal, you know. I think so. Thank you. Uh, Last comment for me. Just yes. another uh, thought mm -hmm. uh, about the word sh shema or shomea. Yes. Uh, because, um, uh, Lord, uh, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sand, uh, he makes a big deal about how would you translate Shema, you know, uh, for Shema Yisrael, and he has many so-called synonyms, but uh, uh, he uses listen Israel, you know, uh, not hear, uh, and understand, 
um, pay attention. You know? So I think Shomea Tfilah is much more than what we normally give to, give to it. You know? Wait. Don't just listen to it, but understand. Uh, uh, I mean, don't just hear it, but uh, you know, you deal with it. Deal with it, really. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, we have the last section of Shmonas right now. Uh, we'll begin this, we'll, 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 God willing, we'll do this bracha, and then we'll leave the last two brachas uh, for next week, God willing. I'm sorry to ruin the suspense, but it does end with Hambarim and Samoy Yisrael Bashalom. No? I think so. Let's, uh, yeah. um, it's very interesting. So this, this bracha would say, so we ask God that he should find favor with our tefillos. And, and I, I don't know about any of you, many times I've looked at this bracha and I've said, it's okay, it's very nice. I guess, I guess it's kind of like wrap up a little bit. So how fundamentally different is this bracha than, than a lot of the other brachas we've said already? I mean, so we, we talk about the first section is general praise of Hashem. The middle section are all these requests. And the third section is God, you should, you should, you should enjoy our tefillos. So aren't you just asking me in a different way? And then, by the way, the bracha ends off, you should bring your divine presence back to Zion. So that's what this bracha sound like. You should answer our prayers, you should redeem us. I mean, we've been talking about that. And we make this major distinction now, we're in the end section of Esrei, and, you know, gosh, those brachas before, we wanted to say those on Shabbos or Yom Tif, those are requests. But this bracha, no, this bracha is not a request. It's, it's talking to God. Look, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like, what's this all about? Um, so I'm sure there are many approaches to this, but... Rav Schwab has a really interesting point, and he says, you know, we were talking a few moments ago about the word ratzon, about God looking favorably upon our tefillos, and in the context of the last bracha, we said that God looked favorably upon our tefillos. Sometimes people dive for things, and they really deserve to be answered how they ask. Not, not special rachmanis, they really, they really deserve it, because God looks upon them favorably, meaning that God is pleased with them. They're conduct in other ways, and they deserve great things. Shrab says, what we're asking for in this bracha is we're not asking for a thing from God. That was earlier brachas. You know what we want, Hashem? We want you to be pleased with our tefillos. We just hope you find, we just hope you find our prayers before you to be, to, to be what you want us to be. Not because we hope that you give us this, we hope that you give us that. That's the middle of Shmona Esrei. We're just asking, this is, we're beginning the wrap of Shmon Esrei. So we say to Hashem, you know, it's just like imagine if you were visiting a relative or something, and, 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 and you say to yourself, you know, I, I you know, so sometimes maybe you're going, maybe you benefit from it in some way, maybe they benefit from it in some way, and at the end of the day, as you find yourself leaving, you say to yourself, I, I hope they appreciate that I came. Not because I want the card from them, I just hope this brought them the joy that I wanted to bring them by visiting. So we begin to end Shmona Esrei. We say Hashem should be find favor with our tefillos. It's, 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 it's a general expression of hope. An interesting way of thinking about it. So, we'd say Hashem alokeinu ba'amcho Yisrael v'svilosam. God find favor in your nation Israel and in their prayers. And bring the service back to your holy abode. It's interesting, Rav Schwab just comments that avodah, which, which has a service, a worship, or something along that, which, which would seem to refer to service in the temple, avodah connotes not getting anything for it. In other words, this is, it's, it's, it's like a servant. An Evid, right? An Evid does not have an hourly rate. An Evid belongs to his master. So we hope the time comes where we just have the opportunity to be serving him in the way of Mikdash. Vishay Yisrael Usfilasam Biavos Kabel Bratsam. The offerings of Israel, their prayers, with love, you should accept them with favor. You should look favorably upon the korbanos of Klal Yisrael and upon the prayers of Klal Yisrael. So which one are we talking about? 
So uh, we've talked about the prayers, we've talked about the kabbalos. So many of the mafarshim say, we're talking about different times, when the Beis HaMikdash is rebuilt, we're primarily talking about the kabbalos. Until that point in time, we're talking about our prayers. That, that, that's the, the most common approach. Um, a really interesting thing, a number of the mafarshim cited Gemara and Menachos. There's Gemara and Menachos, Daf Kuf Yod Amin Aleph, and maybe another time we can talk about what in the world this really means. But the Gemara says that every day the angel Michoel brings the souls of the righteous as an offering to God. Whatever that means. So some of the Mepharshim say that that's part of what we mean even before Beis HaMikdash, the offerings of Klal Yisrael, meaning that the lives of the pious of Klal Yisrael are in and of themselves offerings before God. You should just have nachas. You should have nachas from our korbanos, from our tefillos, maybe from the lives of our righteous. By the way, there's a, there's a famous question here about where to put the comma. I, 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 with trepidation, I mentioned that it might not be how the art world says it, though. <laughs> so one way to say is, So there are some, you might hear sometimes that people do the repetition, there are some who have that opinion. Yeah, and that's definitely a real opinion in Klal Yisrael, that you should bring back the service to your abode along with the offerings, Kama, Usfila Sam, Miyabas Kabel Bratzam, and all the prayers of, of, of Klal Yisrael you should accept willingly. That's one way to read it. The other way to read it, which I think is more common, uh, which is the way I originally read it, you should bring Pesach Mikdash back, and you should always accept the offerings and the prayers of Klal Yisrael. Okay. Usihil Ratzam Tamid Abudas Yisrael Amecha. And may the service of Israel, your nation, always be favorable before you. And a lot of times people think of this as the next bracha. This is still the same bracha. And you should allow us to see your return to Zion with mercy. And in the vein of what we've been talking about, not because we want to have a redemption, because it'll be so great and we won't, we won't have to worry about Iran and we won't have to worry about this, we won't have to be scared about that and anti-Semitism. No! Just because this is something that you want, we want it too. This is not in the Bakasha section, I just want to say. This is, we, we, we're not making requests of God now. It's just we know you want it, and since you want it, we want it. To have that more meaningful relationship with you. Um, there's a Medrash Tanhuma. You know, the language of, of our eyes should see your return to Zion. It's just an interesting language. Our eyes should see your return to Zion. So the Medrash Tan Chuma, there's um, a, a pasuk from Nabi, Bahayu Einecha Ro'os Esmorecha. Your eyes will see your teacher. And the Medrash says that this pasuk could be understood as referring to time in the end of days. Again, this is another one of these things. Who knows what it really means? But, but the Jewish people sit before God like students in a class, and they get to ask him all the questions about all the aspects of the Torah. So the Farshim say that's the language here, that our eyes should see your return to Zion. Meaning, because I mean, when you think about it, you talking about God's return to Zion in the context of our eyes. I mean, one thing, our vision of God's return to Zion, we can't see God in the first place. So it's just interesting to think of this measure a little bit. Obviously, without this measure, it just means that we should see clearly that God has returned. You know, see it, look around, the obvious God has returned. But this is another way to think about it, that we should have such clarity about the will of God in the end of days, and it's an interesting thing. That the God who brings his presence back to Zion. I just want to say one more thing before I open it up. Um, again, this is not the way it's normally read, but just something else to think about. Um, Rav Schwab says, in the middle of the bracha, we say, "Bishay Israel Sfilasam, the, the offerings of Israel, their prayers, Biyavas Kabel Bratzam. With love, you should accept it with favor. Sounds a little bit redundant. Ava Bratzam. See, he suggests that's not the right way to, to read it. He suggests it should be Bishay Israel Sfilasam Biyava. They had the prayers of Israel with love that we come to just with love, God. The love that we have when we express ourselves to you, you should accept that favorably." But, but whether or not you read the words that way, it's, it's, it's a nice way to think about this bracha in general. That this is just all about we. We, we hope to have a meaningful relationship with you. Aaron. Yep, sorry. Yeah. Regarding 
what she was saying earlier about seeing seeing God, you know, returning and everything like that. The the word kavzam, uh, that, that shorich, also connotes a higher level of seeing. You know, in, in the prophets as well. Kavzam Badia, he called seer, a chose, a blind, right? that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So giving a higher level of, of awareness, you know, seeing Hashem as well. I think that's a wonderful point. Thank you very much. Linda? Why is Ahava just here? You can think of it when you're, you're having Bakasha or having a crescent. Besides welcoming um, Ahava with love. You know, look at us with love. How is this welcoming and, 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 and Like here, there's an insertion of Ahava. I think it's a very interesting point. I, I think you could say that it speaks to what we were discussing before which is, I, I, I hope I'm not offending any of the parents in the room, but when a child comes to a parent and wants $20, they don't really want $20 with love. They just want $20. <laughs> you know, so, so we, 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 what'd you say? Right, so, so that, that's true. So that's the first part of Shmon right? Uh, and, and, then, and then the middle of Shmon Esrei is the specific request. But, but I, I think your point is very worthwhile. The last section now, we turn to God and we say, okay, all of that aside, you know, we, we made our request. You gave it to us, you didn't give it to us, whatever. I just want to say now, we, we, want, we want to have Ava for, for its own sake. You know, it's almost like, I'll, I'll forgive, this is a very crass muscle, and I, I hope I don't offend anyone with this one. Everyone has this mythical great aunt somewhere or another that, that all their younger relatives go to visit and everyone knows when you go and visit they give you like a hundred dollars or something you know so 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 imagine if if they make they make the visit and you know they they, they come and they take pictures and this and that and and the, the, the elder relative gives a hundred dollars and so, so some people at that point say thank you very much and they leave Ho hopefully a person maybe pockets it but, but that's okay, that's very nice. Now let's, let's, let's just sit together now. And, and lahavta, lahavta, that's, that, that's the feeling here. It's not about asking. Tefillah is not, tefillah is partially about asking, but it's such a powerful thing. On Shabbos and Yom Tov, we have the Shemona Esrei. We don't make one of these requests from the middle of Shemona Esrei. And it's still a meaningful discussion with God. Because it's not about the request. Part of having a meaningful discussion, when appropriate, we ask for things. But we don't end off with that. And, and, and there are times of the year where we don't discuss it at all. So we shall always follow the request. Well, we'll get to that, God willing. <laughs> we, we have to understand that, right. Well, we'll get to that, God willing. And I hope I develop a good approach before next week. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Okay, Ashima. Thank you very much. Thank really, you. You have a better you have a better watch than than Ron Scheinson. Because oh. I ended early for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The <laughs> Ava.